Hey everybody! So in this video I'm going to be going over how to utilize the dropper loop. In my last video I went over how to tie the dropper loop and the mechanics of it. So now we're going to take what we learned from the last video and piece it together. And then in a separate video I'm going to show you a few other ways to utilize it as well. So in this video I'm going to be going over how to tie a chicken rig, also known as a high-low rig, probably depending on what part of the United States you're in. I know in the South I'm pretty sure they refer to them as chicken rigs. Heard them called that up here too as well. So We'll be tying chicken rig, high, low rig, whatever you want to call it, all right? So what's good about the um, dropper loop, like I said in my last video, it is multi-purpose. But as far as the chicken rig and high, low rig, it also is a multi-purpose um, rig to tie up because it can be used for fluke, sea bass, cod, ling, um, porgies. So that's mainly what I go fishing for. So I'm sure it could be utilized in plenty of other ways too. So anyways, well, let's get started. So we're going to take our leader, okay? So our leader can either be connected already to our rod, to our braid, or we can have basically tie them up right now like I'm gonna be doing. That way I can just throw them on with a barrel swivel at some point, all right? So right now I'm just going to take my leader that I have and I'm going to go a couple inches down, probably about a foot down, and I'm going to start my dropper loop. So I'm going to wrap it around my hand again okay and then we're gonna pull so with the chicken rig we're going to have two dropper loops on it all right so we're going to wrap it around the hands we're going to twist the two i'm going to go a little faster this time because i have a video on how to tie this so we're going to twist the two twist the two twist the two pull the one through so depending on how big you make your loop at the beginning that's how big your dropper loop is going to be okay so we're going to pull it all right, so now we have one, and then we're gonna go down. So the biggest thing is, I mean, I hear people say that they measure them and this, that, the other, but my biggest thing, if you haven't noticed by now, is keeping it super simple. So we don't really need to measure it, just make sure your dropper loops aren't touching. You don't want your hooks to touch at the end. That's the biggest thing, because you don't want it to tangle. So you don't have to worry about measuring it, just make sure they're at a good distance. You don't want them to be too far, you don't want them to be too close together. So I'm gonna go about, if you really wanna measure, it's probably about two feet right here, okay? Not even. So just, just because I started at two feet doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be two feet apart, okay? So just keep that in mind because once you start wrapping around your hand, it's gonna take up some space. So I'm gonna go down a little bit. Now I'm gonna wrap it around my hand. I'm gonna twist the two, twist the two, twist the two, twist the two, pull the one through, okay? So now we have two of them, okay? All right. So then I'm going to take it and going to end it right about here. I'm gonna go down a little bit. I'm gonna snip it, okay? Okay, so now that we have our two dropper loops and we have a sinker loop, which is just an overhand knot, basic knot, we're going to attach our hooks, okay? So we're going to squeeze these together. I like to bite it together. That way it's nice and thin, that way you can actually utilize it better. So we are going to take our teaser or squids, whatever we're putting on. I, I like to use these squids personally. I think they work great for everything. So I'm just gonna feed it through like that. And then it should be sitting like this. And then I'm going to put my hook on next, okay? So I'm gonna feed the hook through the eye. I mean, I'm going to feed the line through the eye of the hook, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and feed it through just like that. Okay, and we're gonna pull that around and we're going to pull that through or push it through, I should say, and just like that. Okay, so it's very simple. You can wrap it around the line around the hook or on the eye of the hook again, but I mean, you don't have to, but if you feel more comfortable doing so, then go ahead and do it. Just keeping it simple, like I've said numerous times now. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're going to put our squid onto the loop, okay? And then we are gonna go put our hook eye through the line again. So we're just gonna feed it through just like that, okay? And then we're gonna feed the loop around the hook and we're gonna pull once again, okay? All right, so now, so now we have our 
two hooks put on by using the dropper loop and then we also have our teasers on and we also have the sinker loop right here which was just a basic overhand knot okay and then we're going to have this end right here which is going to be the part that connects to our braid okay so by connecting it you can either use an albright you can use a double uni knot fg knot or you can use a barrel swivel whatever you prefer and then we are just going to attach the sinker right here. We're gonna feed it through, and then we have our rig all put together. What's good about this is that you can tie a bunch of them and have them all ready to go, especially when you're wreck fishing and you get caught up and you lose your rigs. It's good to have. So you can tie, like I said, you can tie them up and that way you have a bunch ready to go. And then if you guys also have any other questions, feel free to let me know. In my next video, I'm gonna be going over how to tie up a fluke rig by using a bucktail and a teaser on top with using the dropper loop, okay? So if you guys have any questions, once again, feel free to let me know and I'll see you guys soon, bye.